which is uh, actually an ambulance. It's a New York State certified ambulance. So we can show you the capabilities of that. Um, um, we got some of our senior boat personnel that are going to show you sonar and stuff like that we have on the boat. Um, we're going to bring our equipment's all outside, bring everybody down. We have a high water rescue truck with us, which is a new piece of apparatus for us. And we're going to do a little uh, water rescue presentation. Okay, the water rescue is going to take place over at the dilution pumps, which is it's in the inlet, so we can whoever's not on the boats can walk over there and we can actually watch what's going on right from the here. So, does anyone else have any other questions? All right, I'm going to turn it over to Charlie. He's going to do the presentation and then we'll have slides. If there's coffee and stuff, then we'll want to share with us. No. All right, thanks. Good morning and welcome to the North Board. Appreciate everybody coming out. I know uh, there's a lot of familiar faces uh, you guys have been out here. I want to, you know, give uh, everyone an overview of the facility, you know, what it is we do here, uh, explain some of the hazards that you might encounter when you come in here. And uh, one of the things I added on this year, which was asked, uh, requested, that uh, we do was uh, go over a uh, an overview of what our intake structures are like. We do have divers that come in and do maintenance for us out there all the time, and uh, if they ever got into trouble and uh, needed help and you guys had to get out there, it would probably be a good idea for you to know how things are going to figure out there, where it's safe for you to be, what the conditions are going to be like, and uh, you know, where not to be, certain places that you're not going to want to be at. So, uh, we are 265 acres or so for the power station. We've got five large oil tanks, four stacks, four boilers, four turbines. Uh, we generate electricity for, you know, it gets sent out to Long Island, almost uh, up to the capability of 1,500 megawatts total. We take water into the plant up here. This is our intake lagoon, so we bring the water in. This pump all out on this uh, west dock area. Get the pump through all these units, comes out here through the discharge channel, goes over a weir at the end, and then returns back out to the uh, one in the sound. Uh, let's see. Some of the different areas that we have here is our uh, <coughs> MSD compound, which is basically a warehouse that's right out by the front gate when you first come in. We have our wastewater treatment facility. The Iroquois gas pipeline comes into the station and comes in just uh, touches in off the beach from where our discharge channel is, follows that uh, road all the way into the station, and uh, you drove by, it was on your left as you drove in. Uh, we have the uh, couple of outer buildings where we have our insulation services people, our tech services people. We're going to do an overview of the water uh, intake structure, which is out on the intake side. The light and substation, main plant service building, and a couple other areas. Uh, this is our offshore platform. We'll, we'll, I guess, take a few people out there and just come in and circle around uh, just to give them uh, a little better idea of what is this exactly it's out there and uh, what it looks like, where you can get out, etc. Alright, so uh, in the station itself, our ground floor is 19 feet above sea level. We identify all our elevations in the plant by elevation. <coughs> so we have 19, 31, 51, 60, 70. We're on 31 right now. The, uh, the roof at the top of the oil building is uh, about 210 feet. The stacks are 600 feet tall. We have four units here that generate uh, electricity for Long Island, which has its own boiler and turbine. Uh, each are independent of one another. Our oil is for our natural gas and oil. We burned a lot of oil this winter. It's a little big challenge for us, but it worked out pretty well. And as a result, we ended up taking uh, <coughs> three or four barges uh, that came into the platform, which we hadn't taken in uh, quite a few years. So, uh, total station output 1,500 megawatts. New oil storage. It's one through four. They <coughs> So we have a total of about 85 million gallons, or could have uh, a total of 85 million gallons of uh, fuel on, on the property. 
We have electrical hazards here, ranges anywhere from 138,000 volts, which you can find out in the switchyard, 22,000 volts in the uh, of our generators, and 4,480 and 120 volts in the station. The summer power lines, that's 138,000 volts across the road. Our transformers are located right behind this wall. <coughs> transformers are all oil filled. Walls there basically for uh, the sound barrier for the residents. This is uh, what it looks like behind the wall. That's the transformer. These are uh, oil coolers here. It's basically the mineral oil. I know there have been transformed fires in certain locations in the past. Imagine that's probably a pump area to access, you know, the problem. These are some of our uh, MCCs. This is where we distribute power to different equipment throughout the plant. 480 volts, more 480 volt stuff. Here's a uh, large motor for one of our uh, feed pumps. It's a 4,000 volt motor. And this is our 4 kV switch switch gear. There's uh, you know all kinds of equipment around. You can find welding machines. This is a uh, DC panel, and uh, we do have DC batteries in here, so be aware that. Uh, if they're really large batteries, they look like garbage cans, and I think there's uh, 30 or 60 of them in there. Uh, again, they're acid filled, so uh, you know, be aware of that has it. This is one of the battery rooms. Uh, compressed gases, <coughs> hydrogen, oxygen, acetylene, propane, natural gas. We have all gone for welding, nitrogen, CO2, test gases around. Uh, we do have storage areas for everything. We are uh, on the roadway on the east side as you drove in. There's uh, hydrogen sheds and uh, places to keep all these cylinders. There's some of the sheds here. Walk lifts. It's got a uh, LP gas bottle on it. Uh, chemical hazards. We have uh, bulk. Storage with our sulfuric acid that's down at a wastewater facility that's got the only you know, bulk storage of chemical that we have here. We do have full caustic on the property, a sodium hydroxide that's typically stored in drums. Uh, Hydrazine power core, they have pretty dangerous uh, items, highly flammable. And then our usual lubricating oils and use oil on the site. Some of the chemicals you see for uh, water treatment. We have a, uh, an area which is a drug storage area. It's on the uh, sort of most northeast of the plant. You basically just keep blue oil out there. We have a dedicated room for uh, lubricating oils that's within the plant, but by the receiving area. All these 275 gallon tanks, which is made of all the different flavors of the uh, oil that we have here. Okay, so here we go with the intake structure over here. There's four separate intake structures. There's one for each unit, and then there's also the uh, dilution pump intakes. Uh, each intake structure has uh, a, a north and a south side, an A and a B side. So there's two pumps, there's two intakes. Each pump is uh, rated at about 75,000 gallons per minute on units one and two, almost 86,000 gallons per minute on units three and four. Dilution pumps are the ones that are right in the middle. And all they do is just take water from the intake lagoon, they pump it straight across, goes into a discharge channel. That's just all for cooling, but it's incredible. 247,000 gallons per minute for each pump. <coughs> uh, the parts of the, pump, uh, of the, uh, in the intakes. Uh, we have uh, quite a few horseshoe crabs that like to come here. Plant visit. They usually visit in uh, May, June, and July. The DEC made us put in these screens. They're on uh, units number three and four. It's on the outermost section of the intake. It's basically a four by four mesh. It keeps the crabs from getting caught into our racks and not uh, getting possibly carried in through our travel screens. This <coughs> screen is a trash rack, and that's basically just to keep out large items, floating items like logs or uh, Anything that might be down in there. Garbage, mice. 
After that, we have a trial in water screen, and that, that built us out basically a uh, mussels and uh, fish, seaweed, and that's a moving screen. It goes up and down, and as it, as it comes up, there's water jets that uh, come off the screen, and then all the uh, debris is uh, collected and uh, falls out to the uh, fish truck. The circulating water pumps, that's the big <coughs> vertical pumps that you see out there. They probably go down about 35 feet or so. They're pumping out an incredible amount of water. And then there's some small street marsh pumps. So this is uh, this is units uh, four and three. You can see the uh, this would be the A intake, the B intake. It's a travel water screen. Ahead of that, down below, below the concrete is the uh, trash rack. Part of that is where we have these uh, crab screens out there. These two pumps here are dilution pumps. They normally don't run. Really the only time they're going to run is on the hottest days of the year. And uh, when they start the water, they can actually watch the water level on this truck channel rise up right from here. This would be uh, units number two and one. Again, the uh, B intake is on the south. <coughs> This is screen wash pumps. This just takes water and then pumps it and gets these screens. And that just keeps them free of debris. Uh, this is the discharge channel. There's a beer here. I think we've had problems with people who get out here in boats. Uh, it gets pretty turbulent, especially when the weather gets nasty in the afternoon. And there's uh, you know, quite a large volume of water coming out. There's rocks where everything uh, blows off the beer. It sort of break things up so the boat won't get sucked in the water. The only thing we add to the water as it goes through our uh, plant systems is heat. So it's just warmer. We can no, have it no, no more than 30 degrees warmer than what's uh, coming in on the intake side. So a day like today, the water's probably like 60 degrees. It's probably around 75 or 80 on the discharge. This is the uh, lighting substation. You can see more of the discharge channel. This is our uh, wastewater facility up here to talk about. This is the Iroquois gas right there where those white stacks are. A couple of our office areas. The little storage tanks, this is three and two. Alright, again, so we have the intake structure, circulating water pumps. We have a stop gate that we can actually put down in the outermost slot in the intake, which allows us to do maintenance. We do that typically in the winter time. We'll drop the gate, we'll pump all the water out of the intake, and then we'll clean all the marine life out of there. Uh, we will bring divers in to help seat that gate. And, uh, we'll drop it down there. They'll pack sand and rags in just to keep the water out because it doesn't seal properly. This is what uh, a trash rack looks like. So this is a uh, heavy bar steel. And uh, I think we have some fine glass ones now, but uh, this is keeping any large items or large things from getting in there and possibly damage our traveling water screen or circulating water pump. This is what the uh, traveling water screens look like. So they're all different panels. There's probably about 40, 50 of them that are on a whole chain that goes up and over. This is about 24, 30 inches across, maybe about 10, 12 feet wide. This is uh, looking down <coughs> into our intakes from uh, ground level, and you can see the trash, kind of hard to see the trash rack up here. Um, this is where the grab scooters would be up the side, and the nice little fish one around. Uh, so that's probably about six to eight feet between those two. Those this is the grab excluder, just a 4x4 mesh on a, on a big steel frame. And then uh, this is just a cross sectional view of the intake. So this is where the uh, stop gate or the grab screen goes. This area here is where your trash rack is going to sit. Beyond that is where the traveling screen is going to sit. This is moves up and comes around. And then over here is where. Uh, 
circulating water pumps right here. So these take suction from way down here, vertical pump, and then pumps out into the plant. This is an overhead view, plant view. So you can see again the outermost uh, the where the uh, south gate of the bread is fluted does, trans racks, southern screens, and then the uh, circling the water pumps. Any questions on, on the, uh, the water intake plot you guys might have? All right, so I got a quick question for you. Yeah. With the amount of water that you're pulling in there, we had an issue we had to put divers in the water. How dangerous is it that the guys aren't going to get sucked into this? The water velocity, when everything is clean, is about, uh, I guess, about a foot per second. It's really not all that incredible. If the trash rack or the, the, the crab streets and that become clogged up, we'll find a heavy velocity of water there. It's, it's very unlikely that you know someone would get pinned up there where they couldn't free themselves. So I really don't think you would ever have a case there. Again, though, there's you know certain places where it's okay to be, which is ahead of the screen, and that's outside of the room for the wall racks. That's fine. After that, now you have moving parts. You have these travel water screens. Get caught up on those. You certainly don't want to be beyond that where the circulating water is. That's moving so much water that's going to suck you up, spit you out to pieces. You know, uh, drivers come in, do their maintenance. If they go in on that part of the uh, they, they, they want to walk out and see the breaker for that pump is open and locked out, and make sure that there's no way anything's going to happen. Any questions? Yeah, Jim. Yeah, so, the other things we're going to you know, you're going to find here, when it built in the late 60s, early 70s, we have asbestos, primarily on units 1, 2, and 3. Well, the core really doesn't have any. Uh, this high pressure steam and oil. I mean, the steam pressure is up to 2,500 psi, up to 1,000 pounds of uh, number six oil, probably almost 200 degrees. Possible metals, some of our condensers uh, have titanium tubes. We have confined spaces, open gratings, open handrails. <coughs> Long pipe chases where things are uh, you know, going down. This is our fuel oil room. These fuel oil rooms are protected with a foam system. Uh, a lot of hot steam in there and a lot of hot oil as well. So there's a little warning stick we have on any equipment that has titanium. No hot work in the area without approval. For fire protection, we simply have the two water mains that come in. They fill up our uh, two fire tanks with three fire pumps that take suction from those tanks. We have uh, undetermined turbine bearing suppression systems with, with foam on them now. Burning corner fire protection. We have uh, fire protection over our loop oil, each of the fuel oil rooms, air heaters. Quite a few uh, foam systems going in there. Uh, we're going to find city hydrants and then fire loop hydrants. So uh, the yellow hydrants are the city hydrants. That's from uh, Suffolk County Water Authority. Fire loop hydrants are all painted red. And those are uh, running off the discharge of our fire pumps. We also have out of the intakes a uh, salt water connection where you look up your pump and truck and get off the and ran out of water. Just some of our fire systems, fire hoses. A couple of years ago, when we had a really dry spell, the other team came up with this brush fire pre plant. This pre plant has a lot of phone numbers, some diagrams, hydrant maps, and uh, that's located out at the garden. So, as soon as you guys roll through the gate, we did have an issue out there, they can send you that and run away. We're certainly going to. Uh, any incident we have, we're going to meet you guys here. We don't want you just coming in to the plant. You're not going to be by yourselves. We have 30 people on the ER team. team. It's pretty much someone's always here. We can help you out. And, uh, make sure that uh, you're not getting yourselves into trouble. No German deck, German generator. We're not going to go tour that this year because we're going to do primarily our work outside. I'm going to focus today. 
water. Good. I have a question about you guys. In case of an incident, who has uh, charge? Suffolk County, Coast Guard, or you guys? As, as being out there first, but who goes out there first, or who has it? 